Hello, everybody. Today we are looking at WI2, the fur trade. So we're looking at a time period for the most part before America existed, um, when we're still under the British colonies and some of the trade going on with the French as well. But it will expand into the United States as well. So when we look at the fur trade, we're not looking at it from a European perspective. We're trying to see it from a Native American perspective. And I think it's really important to look at it from that perspective, because normally we don't get to see that. And that's not something that's brought up. And so we're going to see this in terms of what does it do for the culture of Native Americans to have this trade for the first time with Europeans and then Americans? And how does that impact their life? So here we go. All right. To begin, what you have with the fur trade is you have this meeting of cultures, sometimes for the first time. Both sides saw that there was a benefit for Europeans Fur was very popular for clothing. For Native Americans, Europeans had goods that they couldn't produce, things like a metal pan, for example, that they simply couldn't produce. And so you have these two worlds coming together. And at first, you don't even have communication. Um, it's going to take time before some Native Americans learn English or French, and some of the French and, and English learn some of the, the phrases and things of Native Americans. And so it's a very interesting mix at first. Um, it's going to be a partnership, but it's going to be a partnership with both sides have very different views and understandings of the world, and that's going to cause some conflict. So to begin, here's what we have. We're going with your notes for WI2, and we'll just do a little bit of time. In the 1600s, American Indians met with trappers who wanted to trade. And where were they from? Well, they're from France, Britain, and the Netherlands, as you can see on the map here. And so you have people coming over with the specific purpose of trapping beaver, trapping other animals, and bringing them back to use the fur for things. And there's going to be two different philosophies on life here. You're going to have Native Americans who see the natural world as their home, as a place to get the resources they need to survive, but it's also something to be conserved and to be respected. On the other hand, you're going to have the French and the United Kingdom and Netherlands coming in, and these are commodities. Uh, furs are things that they need for trade to do better. And they see this as an item. And therefore, when they come into the forest in North America, they're not thinking about how do we conserve this? How do we make sure this is a good place for future generations? They're thinking about profit. And so we're really seeing here, Europeans are thinking profit, Native Americans are thinking livelihood and their homes and where they live. And so they're both gonna look at the woods and these animals very differently. So why do Europeans want it so much? This was fashionable fur, right? You can see all these different kinds of hats that people wore. You know, fur was something people, women would sometimes wear that was popular as well, all that kind of thing. But it had a practicality to it as well. Um, beaver skin was water repellent. And so you did see some farmers and others that would want these kind of things because it would be better for them uh, in terms of trying to, oh, I'm gonna flip over here, trying to keep themselves in good conditions. Um, but it was very popular and therefore there was a large demand for it. And whenever there's a large demand for resources, you're more likely that the resources are going to be exploited. And that's kind of what we saw with the fur trade. So why do American Indians like this? Well, American Indians gain valuable trade items in return. Metal knives, iron kettles, cloth, glass beads, guns, all these things. Now you might look at that and say, wow, those are amazing. Well, yeah, they are for Native Americans. Think about a knife, a metal knife, for example. If you don't have the ability to forge iron or forge metal, what are you making a knife out of? Bones? Rock? You ever try to make a rock rock into a knife? That's not easy. Um, bones are somewhat fragile. And, you know, a kettle, you know, for Native Americans, what are they warming up water and other materials in? Clay pots? Maybe a wood pot? Maybe something carved out of stone? Maybe something made from... Um, you know, the hip of a large animal. None of that is, is easy to work with. None of that lasts very long. A lot of that is fragile. Um, and when they're moving around so much, it's not easy to keep it working. And so these items provide convenience and they provide durability. A metal pot could go anywhere. And if you, you drop it, it's okay. If you drop a clay pot, pot, it's done. A metal knife would allow you to continually cut things without always having to sharpen it like you would if it was stone or if it was bone or breaking. You know, cloth, instead of using the hides of animals, you can purchase cloth. Uh, a gun, they didn't have anything like a gun. So all these things make life much more 
simple, not simple, I should say, um, much more convenient for Native Americans. And so they want them just like we want goods today. You know, you buy a pair of shoes because it's easier than making your own, um, you know, that kind of thing. But there's going to be a cost and the cost is going to be the skins and they need to provide those skins for um, Europeans. So those items came at a price. For example, uh, one known fact here, the Potawatomi, if they wanted to gain a gun, if they wanted to purchase a gun, they had to have beaver skins as high as the musket. Think about that. As high as the musket. I'm six feet tall. Muskets were my height. Let's say a beaver skin's two, three inches tall. We're talking about what? Let's say it's three inches, which is probably wasn't even that big when you put them on top of each other. We're talking about 24 to 30 beaver skins for one gun. And so things were expensive. And that's a lot of skins that you need to get. And think about well, what's that going to do for the beaver population? It's going to redu reduce it dramatically in a very short period of time. Because it wasn't just like one person wanted a gun. A lot of people wanted guns. And so you're going to see that these animals are going to be hunted to the point of almost extinction. So what does this mean? Well, for Wisconsin Indians, they became dependent on trade with the Europeans. And they begin to lose their traditional ways of providing. Because now the focus is the fur trade. In the past, you would focus on how do I teach my kids the ways that we've always done things. But now it shifts to the fur trade. And so, you know, fishing and spear fishing, which was big with the Ojibwe, um, that was part of their culture and how they gained food. And children would spend many hours with their parents learning that. Um, gathering the wild rice was extremely important. It was a source of great nutrients for them. And hunting in general was something that was very big for them. And it's not that when the fur trade occurred that these things stopped, but they weren't focused on. The focus now was getting the furs to get these other items. And so slowly you see generations of Native Americans losing some of these skills, forgetting these abilities and how to work with it because they're not spending so much time with it. They're spending time on the fur trade instead. And that's gonna be a problem down the line because at some point the beavers are gonna run out and then you're gonna be in a situation where you need to go back to your old ways. But it's a question of, do you remember them? And do you still have those skills? And if you don't, you're in a sore spot. So a modern day example would be this, Ellsworth, all right? If you go back to my dad's generation in Ellsworth, most kids going to school were farming children. Okay, go back 30, 40 years, almost all, probably 90% were farming children. And you learned to live off the land. You learned how to farm. You learned how to use the machinery. You knew how to do it so that if you had to do it the next generation, you were good to go because everybody was taught it because you lived on farms. Well, now we see a shift and we see more people in Ellsworth are working in the cities and they're working at office jobs and things like that, which is totally fine. There's no, definitely nothing wrong with that. But what if we had to go back to all of us farming? How much would that impact the world around us? It would be a dramatic change. And I would argue that, you know, a lot of people in Ellsworth would not be able to do it because they've not grown up with these skills. And so when you look at the Native Americans, when they focus all on trading, all of a sudden, when that's gone, the beaver furs aren't coming out anymore. All of a sudden, you're, you're like, well, I got to go back to what we used to, but it's been generations. And for some of these people, they don't necessarily have those skills. And so the big question at the end of the fur trade for Native Americans is, how do we survive now? What do we do? Because not only don't, do you not have as much trade that you can work with, but you've killed a lot of the animals that you depend on. You know, it wasn't just um, beaver. It was fox. It was deer. It was other animals as well. And so all these animals that you need are now gone. And you have to figure out how to survive without them. And that is a very, very harsh reality. So what happens as a result? Well, when you run out of beaver in one territory, you go to another. And so tribes start to fight for territory and river access to gain beaver skins to trade. Now, there was fighting before. That wasn't unusual. But it wasn't for a specific area for beaver skins. Now people are simply wanting to move so they can get more um, beaver to trap. And so you see groups of Native Americans fighting against each other. And the Europeans are starting to play a role as well. And they're choosing one side over the other, depending on the situation. And this leads Native Americans into war. Many tribes create alliances with European countries they trade with. And so when the French and the British go to war in the French and Indian War, Native Americans are a part of it. When the British fight against the colonists in the Revolutionary War, 
Native Americans are a part of it on both sides. And so the introduction of Europeans to America means not only a change in how you live, but also warfare on a larger scale than they had possibly seen. And so these are, are big culture shocks for Native Americans. They're trying to figure out who to work with with Europeans. But the biggest thing we see is they become dependent. Um, they become dependent on European goods. And as we saw from the intro reading, they become dependent on European alcohol, unfortunately. And we see that um, alcohol addiction becomes a major problem. And traders and others use this to gain more goods from the Native Americans, maybe to their unfair advantage. So the big question at the end is now what? We come back to the same picture of all these animals that have been killed for the fur trade. Due to overhunting and trapping, the beaver population dwindles. What impact will this have for Wisconsin Indians? Well, Wisconsin Indians must find new ways to make a living. And for some of them, they'll try to go back to using nature and living that way, and they may have the resources they need. For others, the resources are lacking. And that's going to mean they're going to need to rely on the colonists, the British colonists, and then the American government in terms of getting what they need. Um, and that's going to be a very, very tough uh, relationship, to say the least. So that's where we're at right now. You can work on your journal entry for this section, and we'll see what comes next. And what's going to happen next is once the Americans come in and have become a country, they're going to start making treaties with the Native Americans. And we'll see how that pans out. So have a great day. And as always, talk to your teacher if you have questions.